Yeah, uh, somebody called me from this number. Uh, probably about two hours ago. Yes. John. J O H N. John J O H N. Ham. H A M M. Two M's. What is it? No, you called for John Ham. Well, we could say to him, yeah, I'm Clifford. So why are you giving me wrong information? I'm not giving you wrong information. No, you said you're John, right? Yes. J-O-H-N-H-A-M-M. So who is Clifford Sprouse? I, I don't know who he is. Donna? No, I don't know who he is. Somebody said, somebody called for John Ham and said that I owe $6,000 to the IRS. I'm very sorry, sir, but I'm looking for Clifford. Clifford Jacob Sprouse. Mm. No, um, this is John Ham because they said. John Ham owes six thousand dollars. I owe six thousand dollars. If I don't pay it, I can get arrested. Then get a warrant for my arrest. I was kind of busy. I couldn't answer the phone at the moment, and I think it was like six thousand five hundred. So your zip code is two four seven four zero. Yes. So who is Clifford Sprouse? I don't know, Clifford Sprouse. You called my number. Y'all called looking for me. Okay, please. Uh, I have no idea for any last name. Let me get more information. Okay. John. Clyde. John. Ham. John. John. J-O-H-N. Clyde. C-L-Y-D-E. Ham. H-A-M-M. -M. Okay. Okay. See, they don't have no clue. They're going to make it up. <laughs> this is hilarious. My name ain't really John Ham. See, this is what the uh, they do to you. They kind of manipulate you. You know, it's like, oh, you owe this and you owe that, and you really don't. They, the IRS, don't call you. I got it on me, by the way. There's the number. So I just like messing with their head a little bit. We're going to mess with their head today. <laughs> and they kept saying Clifford Sprouse. I mean, that's my name. But I'm not going to give that to them. I'm going to mess with them a little bit. So, they got me on hold. I don't know how long on hold I am. But after he gets me off hold, I'll get back with you. Yes. Uh, can you help me with your case ID number? Uh, I didn't get no case ID number. Okay. So, uh, what is the amount that you owe to the internal revenue service? It said five thousand six or five or six hundred. I was kind of busy working right at the moment, and I kind of, you know, was in a hurry. Yeah. Who was taking care of the taxes, sir? Um, I take mine to H&R Block. Alright, I'll show. One thing is that the audit department conducted a re-audit on the tax file between the year 2013-2017. And when the audit was conducted, there were several miscalculations and errors in the tax file, but you were not filing the right amount you were supposed to pay to the internal revenue. That's the reason why 
read in Dave's account, outstanding amount of $5,489 on the unit. Okay. Mm. Penalty charges for legal charges in the late fees. Wow, well, how do I fix this? Yes, because of that, the IRS is charged with four. See, they made up a name. And those allegations are violation of federal tax regulation, violation of internal revenue card, theft by deception, and willful misrepresentation of information to the government organization. So, because of this allegation, the IRS has decided to forcefully recover this amount by invoking internal revenue code 63318 GMT. So what this means for you is the IRS will mark a lien on your assets, including your house and car. Only non-bank accounts could be frozen and confiscated, which means that the IRS will recover your tax debt from the balance of level in the bank account. Your social security number could be blacklisted, meaning that you will not be eligible for any government benefits in the future. And if you have any existing tax return with the IRS, then it will stand terminated under Section 30A of IRCOM. And your passport will be seized and if you belong to a country other than the United States, then you are under risk of being deported. So right now, there are two involvement options for you. The first option is to take this matter and try to call out. If you believe that there were no mistakes made from your end, then you can file a legal case against the Internal Revenue Service. But let me tell you, in order to do that, you have to hire a best criminal lawyer for yourself and you have to provide all the documentation in your favor. Do they you make no sense? I mean, start to provide all the documentation to your family, and if you lose the case against the IRS, then not only will you be coming up with the outstanding amount that you owe, but also with the extra penalty charges of fifty thousand to forty thousand dollars. And the second option is for you to accept your mistake as an honest mistake, and that you will cooperate with a senior investigating officer of the IRS. So, before I go in and. I'm just wondering how do I resolve this I want to get it you know I got the money in my bank account I'm just getting off of work I mean I'm in my car now But if you are willing to rectify your mistake and if you are willing to cooperate with the IRS, then I can transfer your call to the investigating department. Okay. I mean, I got $7,000 in my bank account right now. If you believe that there were no mistakes made for me and you can hire a criminal lawyer for yourself. So do you have a criminal lawyer who can represent in your entire account? Now? No. No, sorry, my phone vibrated. I said no. So, what, yeah, so what do you want me to do? How do you want me to help you, sir? Say that again. I'm sorry, I can't hear you really good. I'm breaking out. So how can I help you? I want to see if I can get this resolved paid for, you know. I don't want to, you know, get in trouble with the law or anything. Because I ain't never been in trouble with the law for one. And, you know, I got a good business going on right now. I mean, I'm I'm selling, I'm selling stuff, you know, like I own a retail shop. Okay. So, uh, you're telling me, like, between these years two thousand thirteen. 2017, you are filing your taxes through HR Block. I mean, yeah, I've done it every year. I paid it every year. No, sir. I'm asking you, between the year 2013 and 2017, who was taking care of the taxes? Me, HR Block. I've been with them for like 10 years. Alright, so we're not denying the fact that you don't file your taxes. You were filing your taxes, but you were not filing them correctly. For example, you were supposed to pay a thousand dollars to the internal revenue service, but you ended up paying only eight hundred dollars. So the remaining two hundred dollars between the year 2013 to 2017 is a thousand four hundred eighty-nine dollars on the unit, including a penalty charges, and legal charges, and electricity. I wasn't even working in 2013. So, if you were given a chance to rectify your mistake. Yeah, like, it, it's a mistake. I mean, I'm trying to, you know, try, I want to get it resolved. I mean, do I, like, give y'all my debit card, or do I go write y'all a check? No. For your information, we are not 
not authorized to take any personal information from the phone. Okay. Like, can I send a check over to Internal Revenue Service? No. So, we don't accept any direct payments or checks over the phone, okay, sir? Okay, then how do I pay? How do I pay for the uh, taxes that's being misconsumptioned somehow? Right now, I cannot give you any results of my options. But what I can do is that I will transfer your call to the senior investigating officer. Okay. So please stay connected. Do not disconnect the call. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. This dude is full of it. Seriously, I got it on hold, so you can't hear me. Um, one, they're not going to call you and say, oh, you owe... The IRS. And another thing, to be honest with you, I didn't work in 2013. I was drawing SSI at the time. And, you know, that's personal things I'm saying. So, that's right there knows how, uh, that's a number one flag that knows that they're fake. Another two, no, actually the first one was when I gave them a misleading uh, name, you know. I gave them John Ham, so they're going by John Ham. So they're just typing up a name, saying, "Oh, well, we just use this name since he's using that name." So it's all fake. Don't fall in for these phony stuff because they're out there trying to get you. They're hard, they're trying to find a way to make a dollar. Thank you for your line. The line has been transferred to the senior investigation officer. My name is Officer Alex Cooper. I believe I've been Mr. John Whiteham. And yeah. Yes, uh, your line has been transferred to me, saying that we don't want this case to get e executed against you. And you want to resolve this issue outside the courthouse, am I correct? Yes, sir. Alright, so um, if you wish to resolve this case outside the courthouse without facing any kind of criminal charges, then you will have to pay the outstanding amount which you owe to the IRS. And I can see that there's an outstanding amount of $5,489. Do you have the whole amount to resolve this case outside of the courthouse? Heck, I got $7,000 in my bank account right now. Alright. So, um, if you are willing to resolve this case, then we are going to fix an appointment with you. And we are going to appoint two of our local IRS agents to assist you in resolving this case. Can you Yeah, it's John Ham sixty nine at gmail dot com. John Ham sixty nine at gmail dot com, right? Yes. All right. So um, I really got that email case, address. There are some certain rules and conditions provided by the courthouse. So you need to listen to me carefully and then tell me whether you can fulfill the conditions or not. Alright? Okay. The first condition is that you need to stay connected with me because this is a recorded line. <coughs> and we are recording this conversation as an evidence. And this recording will be played inside the courthouse to show your intention about this case. So you cannot hang up on me, put me on hold, or even on mute. Until and unless you receive the 10 digit arrest warrant. I'll put you on mute, what are you going to do? I'll put you on mute. This line is the only evidence that you're on the process of resolving. And if you get an inquiry from the sheriff's department, then they have the authority to get you arrested. So in order not to get you arrested, we will have to generate the 10 digit arrest warrant cancellation code from the courthouse. So until and unless you receive the 10 digit arrest warrant cancellation code on your email, you are not authorized to hang up the call, put me on hold, or even on mute. That's the first condition. And the second condition is that you cannot involve any third party in this recorded section because the federal government has kept it confidential between you and the IRS just to mention your credit and the privacy in the society. Does that mean YouTube? Because so that's where you're going, buddy. In this recorded section. You're and getting you blasted. He or she will also face the legal consequences along with you and the option to resolve this case will be closed for you. 
that second condition. And the third and the last condition is that we are not authorized to take any of your personal information, like a credit card, the debit card, or any of your banking information. That's because you, you get found out. This payment through an EFTPS, that is electronic federal tax payment system. So are you aware about the system before? Yes. All right. So in this system, what you need to do is that you will have to physically go down to a government authorized store. And from there, you will have to convert your fund into a government voucher. Because we cannot present your credit card or your debit card information inside the federal court. And moreover, you are under an investigation. And all your accounts will go under investigation. So the IRS won't accept any payments from you in cash or from any of the plastic cards. So you will have to convert your fund into a government voucher. And you will have to keep this voucher with you until our officers physically come at your place with all the legal papers to brief you about the case and then to collect this payment from you in front of this government voucher. Mm, right. Okay. All right, so first of all, you will have to drive down to the bank to withdraw this amount in cash, and I will look at the government authorized store close to you. From where you will be able to convert your fund into a government voucher. So how far is the bank from you? Um, I got the bank on my one side, and I got... Walmart, probably about two minutes down the road, I got a walk. Alright, so first of all, you will have to go to the bank, so we go to uh, $5,489 in cash. I mean, then you will have to go down to... mm -hmm. I can use my card to go buy to the uh, store and get it. I don't have to pull it out. Well, you will, you will have to do it in cash, sir. Huh? Okay. So you need to take your car keys, take your driver license, take everything you need, and make sure that you carry a pen and a paper along with you. Okay. And once you get ready and once you get in your car, just let me know. So I can shoot an email to the court telling that my client, Mr. Ham, is on the process of resolving. So not to find this any charges against you. He's getting and ready to get it here in a minute. Your papers. So once you get ready and once you get in your car, just let me know. I'm on the line for you. Okay, well, I don't have a car. I'm, a car, I'm walking. Yeah, I'm walking. I don't have a car. Alright, and how, how long it will take for you to get to the bank? Like, right here. I was, I was walking there as soon as you were talking. Oh, you were walking since we were talking? Yeah. Alright. I'm walking in the door now. You're, you're walking inside the bank? Yeah. I'll be on the line for you, so you will have to withdraw the $5,489. And once you withdraw the fine, once you're out of the bank, just let me know. I'll okay. Yeah, I like to withdraw from my account. John Ham. $5,490. So funny. Okay. I'm signing. Where do you want me to sign? Right here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You have a good day. All right. I got the five thousand dollars. What do you want me to do with it? You got the money? Yes. You can do that. Uh, you can go back to your house. Start counting. You say go to my house or? Go back to your house. Go on your date and start counting. Okay. Well, my house is like ten minutes up the road, and I walk, and the stores is right up the road. Go back to your house. There will be two police officers arriving at your house. Why will the police officer be in my house? Why? Should I just come and collect the off getting him on the GO to the Irish? Well, you wanna know something? This this was a scam call, just like you're scamming everybody else. You're getting put on YouTube. So I hope you like my fame. Because you're giving me revenue, uh -huh. buddy. What what do you say? Um You are a scammer and I just scammed you. Are you trying to make me famous? Then I'm gonna do damage. <laughs>
Yeah, guess what? I don't have $5,000. I didn't go to a bank. You're being put on YouTube. And your phone number is being traced right now. So, I hope you... Uh, I want you to be in here. Like, what's, what's your address? It's your mama's house. Okay. It's your mama's house. Because, uh, I'm not giving you my information. I'm not giving you my real name. I gave you an alias name. And you still played along with it. Look how stupid you are. You are stupid scamming these innocent people that that don't know no better and you're out there to scam them. You're stealing. Where are you coming from? You coming from Pakistan or something? Your number's being traced to the cops. I called the police. The police was on the line the whole time. Listen to this conversation. I put you on mute about a million times. So just just let everybody know on YouTube that you are a scam. See people? This is how you know it's a scam. See the number? 202-800-9464. Blow that number up. Once again, please give me the number too. No, I gave your number, buddy. Because millions of people who are watching on this is going to get you. And your number has been traced to the police department. What? I'm not telling you my real name. You know my name, John Ham. No, I'm asking for, uh, like, my name. You don't know my name? What's your name? Jim Garrison. Jim Garrison. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Because you're Indian. Oh, oh, he hung. So this is going to be it for this video. Um. So, yeah. I mess with the IRS scammers. And if they keep calling me, I'm going to keep recording them and we'll still get them. Uh, I know that towards the end, they were like, ah, ba 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 you know, doing that kind of crazy stuff. So, it's one word in advice. Never fall for it because they're fake. The IRS don't never call you. The IRS don't never, you know, only thing they do is send you letters. It's the only thing. So, if you get the letter from the IRS, you better respond. But if they call you, chances are it's a scam so if you like this video give it a like give it a subscribe twitter and scram links are in down in the description drop a like on this video if you like these irs scam calls and i guess i'll see you guys in my next video jace press out